Okay, thank you for the invitation, and it's my great pleasure to give a talk here. Uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about the two calabial categories and the donors, uh, motivic donors and Thomas invariants in so, uh, associated such to such kind of categories. Um, for uh, three-dimensional Calabial categories. Uh, the motivic Donuts and Thomas invariance was introduced by Konsevich Soberman uh, via the following two approaches, uh, namely, the first one is uh, motivic whole algebra, and the second one is the cohomological whole algebra. And through the uh, kind of uh, integration map in onto the Mm, so-called uh, quantum torus. Of course, the coefficient ring of uh, these two kinds of quantum torus are different. Uh, but anyways, via uh, these two approaches, uh, they get They get the motivic Donald and Thomas invariants. Okay, this is the uh, three Calabial case, and today I'm going to talk about uh, some uh, analog story of two Calabial categories. This is a uh, joint work with uh, Soberman. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, introduce the notion of uh, uh, indeconstructible n infinity uh, d dimensional Calabial categories. Mm, I'm going to abbreviate into d Calabial categories. Uh, in fact, there is a notion of uh, indeconstructible A infinity categories. Um, there is a long list of data and axioms. Uh, for this kind of uh, infinity categories, and I'm not going to write them down here. But the key point is that uh, we can associate the stack of objects uh, to this kind of category, such that, I mean, by the stack of objects, uh, I mean the following thing. There are, mm, I mean, there is a, fi a countably, a countable, collection of uh, algebraic varieties, which we denoted them by yi. Here i is a, a countable set uh, with uh, action of the group GLN. Uh, so G L N I. Here N I is uh, any uh, integer. I mean positive integer uh, depends only on this I. Such that the following uh, condition is satisfied. Mm. 
Well, I forgot to mention that we fixed a ground field k, such that the character of k is 0. OK, now for this stack of ob objects, uh, we say that uh, there exists such kind of varieties with this uh, group action such that um, for any uh, field extension, k prime, um, there exists uh, equivalence. Equivalence of uh, group points <coughs> of the uh, isomorphism classes. Of a uh, mm, triangulated triangulated a infinity uh, k prime linear category, which is denoted by C of k prime. and the accountable union of the quotient stack. Mm. Are you referring to objects of general? Uh, yes, objects. Classes yeah. uh, of objects. And the quotient stack, which we denoted them by uh, Y, I, G, L, and I. OK, this is called the uh, stack of objects. Uh, all right, this is the triangulated A infinity ca uh, category. And for now, let me introduce the notion of uh, decalabial categories. Mm. Calabial category of dimension D is a weekly unit, unit of K, uh, of course, over K, K linear. Category, uh, which is triangulated uh, infinite k linear, sorry, in infinity, triangulated uh, such that uh, all the graded uh, vector spaces, I mean the home space. Uh, is finite dimensional, uh, finite dimension for uh, each pair of objects E and F. And furthermore, we have the following data. The first one is mm, a non-degenerate non mm, pairing on the home space. Denote the pairing uh, by this notation. It's on um, hum of E F tensored with uh, hum of F E is mapped to shifted by negative d. Uh, and this uh, pairing is uh, symmetric with interchanging the uh, two, uh, two elements. And the 
Second piece of data is uh, the potential, namely for any integer which is bigger than or equal to two, and any objects, and ob objects, uh, yes, up to en in the objects of this category. There exists a mm, polylinear uh, cyclic invariant, namely Z mod N C invariant map on the, on the following space. And we denote it, this map by W. Mm. It's on the tensor of the following home spaces. Mm. Home from E i to E i plus one. Where we need a degree shifting by one. Right. And it's mapped to k shifted by three minus d. Here, of course, we uh, suppose that e n, n plus 1 is equal to e1. Okay, then the third part is the compatibility of uh, this uh, data, namely the potential wn of a sequence of uh, harms a1 up to a n is equal to the non-degenerate pairing of the following thing. And n minus one a one up to a n minus one paired with a n. Here m uh, n minus one is the uh, higher uh, composition map of this uh, a infinity structure. All right, this is the uh, notion of uh, d-dimensional Calabi-Yau category. Uh, and now, uh, if we assume that d is equal to 2, then we will prove that uh, uh, a certain type of uh, two Calabi-Yau categories is uh, in one-to-one -one correspond co corresponds to uh, a certain type of quivers. OK, so let's. states the following uh, theorem. Now let's denote C by a two-dimensional Calabi-Yau category, which is generated by the following uh, spherical uh, collections, namely by a finite collection, which is denoted by E. It consists of finite number of objects. Hmm. Uh, this set of objects satisfy the following condition. First one is x zero of uh, each object is one dimensional. Uh, probably here I forgot to mention that uh, x is the cohomology of the home space. Okay, then the second second assumption is x zero of e i e j 
is equal to 0 where i is not equal to j. And the third part, the x space where the degree is negative of any of these objects is equal to 0, no matter i and j are equal to each other or not. OK, this is the assumption of our category. Now, uh, we state the following thing. The equivalence classes of such categories with respect to the uh, A, A infinity uh, equivalence, Pre preserving the uh, two Calabial uh, structure and so uh, and that set of uh, generators. Okay. Uh, are in one-to-one -one correspondence. <coughs> with a finite symmetric quivers. Here by symmetric quiver, uh, I mean the number from the number of arrows from one vertex i to j is equal to the number of the arrows in the opposite direction. Can you have loops? Uh, yes, with even with number. even number of, of loops. Even number of loops. OK, now let me uh, probably give you a sketch. Uh, the, do you have some relations in the quiver? Uh, relation? No, no relations so far. No. OK, uh, suppose that we are given such a kind of two Calabria category. We want to construct a quiver Q in the following way. Mm, for each of these uh, spherical generator, we uh, give a vertex. Uh, well, maybe let's denote the set of vertex of this quiver by Q0 and the set of uh, arrows by Q1. We have a vertex i corresponds to each of these uh, spherical generator. It's spherical, it's kind of misleading curve because we have loops. Uh, uh, well, okay. Yes. This generator. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, then the number of uh, arrows hmm, from the vertex i to j is equal to the dimension, uh, probably there is some subtlety here. Mm -hmm. uh, how to say it in a clear way? Dimension of x1 doesn't work? Uh, yeah, I mean. Mm. Because. Mm, Right. Uh, because of that uh, non-degenerate pairing on the uh, home space, uh, we can see that the dimension of, uh, wait, wait a minute. 
All right, yeah. That's the thing. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, because dimension of x1 ei ej is equal to dimension of x1 ej ei, by our definition, we can see that the number from i to j is equal to the number from j to j. This proves that the quiver is symmetric. And uh, again, because of this non-degenerate non pairing, we can see that mm, dimension of x1 uh, i is even, which means that uh, the number of loops at each vertex is even. OK, this is one direction. and the other direction from a quiver, we want to construct the two color bell category. Okay, to uh, illustrate this kind of construction, uh, for simplicity, we just assume that this quiver is uh, only has uh, one vertex and a bunch of loops. And the number of loops is equal to 2n. OK, then we introduce the following graded uh, vector space, which is denoted by a. It's equal to k shifted by 1, direct sum with k2n with k negative 1. All right, then we want to introduce uh, graded uh, coordinates on this vector space, namely graded coordinates, namely uh, on the first piece. Let's denote it by alpha which has degree uh, 1. And on the middle part, k to 2n, let's denote the coordinate by uh, xi, cos i. Here, i is from 1 to n. There are 2n uh, coordinates. Right? And on the third piece, Let's denote, uh, I've got to mention that the degree here is 0. And the third piece, uh, the coordinates, is denoted by beta. And the degree is equal to negative 1. Now to construct uh, this 2 Calabial category, we only need to uh, construct a potential on this graded vector space. OK, so. Let's denote the following potential, w, w canonical by alpha squared beta plus the sum over i from 1 to n of alpha xi cos i uh, minus alpha cos i i xi. Of, of course, up to uh, cyclic permutation. OK, so this is a function on this uh, graded vector space A. And uh, it's uh, easy to see that uh, with respect to the following Poisson bracket, which is the partial differential with respect to xi, partial differential with respect to say i, acted on f and g plus the second part is 
the partial diff differentials with respect to alpha and beta, respectively. And it's easy to see that W canonical with itself is zero. And moreover, this uh, potential gives a product on this graded vector space by, by, what is, uh, by the third piece of data of the definition of our club L category. All right, uh, so this is the construction from the quiver K to the to Calabial category. And uh, if we want to uh, specify this one to one correspond co correspondence, we need to prove that mm, uh, any deformation of this canonical uh, potential, uh, I mean, to prove that this canonical potential uh, cannot be deformed. So uh, we need to consider the following differential graded Lie, Lie algebra, G canonical, which is a graded sum over all the integers of G canonical to the n. OK, here. Uh, where G canonical, uh, canonical N is the following thing. Mm. So that it's, uh, it belongs to G hat N. I will introduce G hat N later, such that uh, the cyclic degree of this W is bigger than or equal to 2. By cyclic degree, I mean uh, the number of all these coordinates uh, appear in each terms of this, uh, uh, sorry, of this uh, W. And that G hat N is the following thing. Mm. Well, maybe let me introduce the following notation. Here, cyclic means uh, cyclic, cyclic words on this space, namely cyclic words uh, in terms of these uh, coordinates. OK, so here, g hat n uh, is all the w's with cohomology degree equal to n. OK, so the uh, deformation of this uh, canonical Calabial structure is controlled by this differential graded Lie algebra. Uh, of course, I've got to give you the differential. The differential here is given by the Poisson bracket with respect to the canonical uh, potential. And it turns out that the cohomology uh, of degree bigger than or equal to 1 of this G canonical is equal to 0, which means that uh, the deformation, uh, I mean this uh, canonical uh, Calabial structure cannot be deformed. So we proved the one-to-one -one correspondence of uh, these two Calabial categories, I mean the infinity uh, equivalence categories of uh, classes of these categories and uh, this symmetrical, symmetrical quivers. All right. Uh, this is a big class of uh, two-dimensional Calabial categories. Now I'm going to uh, introduce uh, 
approach to uh, Donald and Thomas invariants of two Calabial categories. Uh, first, I need to briefly recall the motivic step function. Mm. Suppose that we have the following pairs, x and g, where x is an algebraic variety, and g is an affine algebraic group, and g acts on x. OK. Then there is a notion of a uh, map of this uh, between these two pairs of uh, quotient stack. Uh, maybe I let's denote the source by y h and the target by x g. Uh, this kind of map is given by correspondence. And let's consider the following group generated by the uh, isomorphism classes of this uh, uh, map of uh, quotient stacks. Isomorphism classes of such kind of uh, maps. Namely, it's generated by the following symbol. The isomorphism class is denoted in this way. And we need to add some uh, relationship, namely, mm, for the disjoint union, y1, h1, disjoint union with y2, h2, mapped to xg, it's equal to the sum of these two parts, y1, g1, to xg, with y2, g2, uh, sorry, H. This is the first relation, and the second relation is the following thing. Uh, y two H mapped to X G is equal to uh, Y one cross with the affine space here y two two y uh y one yes y one is an h equivalent uh equivalent h equivalent vector bundle of rank OK, this is the uh, motivic stack function. Um, then we consider the falling space. Definition. Consider the following space, namely, uh, well, maybe let's denote it by this, denote this group by motivic stack function with target x, g. Let's consider the following uh, motivic stack function on spec k module. which is the direct sum 
of all the motivic stack functions with the target given by y i g l n i. Here, y i g l n i is the our uh, decomposition of the stack of objects of our two-color bill category. Of course, here we need to add some other things. Namely, add l to the nth, where n is negative. Here, l is uh, the class of the affine line. OK. Uh, then we can introduce a whole multiplication on this space, uh, which I'm not going to write down the detail here. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will eat up all the time. And uh, this whole multiplication. Let's call this uh, algebra motivic whole algebra. And it turns out that this product is associate, uh, associative. Right. OK, after defining uh, this motivic whole algebra, uh, we can approach to the definition of uh, Donaldson Thomas invariants. But before that, we need to uh, fix the following data. First part is a triple gamma and the pairing and the quadratic form Q, where gamma is an abelian group of finite rank, namely it's uh, isomorphic to Zn. And this is a bilinear form. on this gamma, and Q is a quadratic form. On gamma tensored with the real numbers. And the second part is the class, uh, class map from the stack of objects of our category to this group gamma mm. such that uh, they induce the map from the objects of our mm, category, I mean the k bar linear category factors through the following group homomorphism. The group homomorphism, which it is, is denoted by class k bar, is from k naught of this k linear category to the group gamma. And it's also compatible uh, with the <coughs> Euler form of the category and the bilinear <coughs> form given on this uh, gamma in the following way. And hmm, the Euler form on the category is equal to the non-degenerate form on the gamma of the class of these two objects.
Ah, ok. Like this? Okay. Uh, like. And the third part is the uh, constructible st stability condition. Uh, compatible with our quadratic form in the following way. The form restricted on the uh, kernel of the central charge. Did I mention the central charge? No. Okay. Where? Central charge is a additive map from gamma to uh, the complex numbers, and the quadratic form on the class of our object E is non-negative, where this object is semi-stable. semi-stable with respect to our uh, stability condition. All right, after fixing this stability condition, we can define the following uh, quantum torus. on the uh, commutative ring R is defined in the following way. Uh, it's denoted by uh, R sub gamma R is equal to the direct sum of gamma <coughs> R generated by the following symbol, uh, E gamma hat, where this generator E gamma hat satisfies the following uh, relationship. E gamma one hat, E gamma two hat is equal to L to one half of gamma one, gamma two, times E gamma one plus gamma two hat. Okay, and E naught hat is equal to uh, 1. This is the definition of quantum torus uh, with the co coefficient ring R. And uh, suppose we are given a stability condition and uh, And the strict sector V inside of the complex numbers, we can also define the following quantum torus R sub V associated to this sector in the following way. Here, of course, gamma uh, well, is inside of uh, gamma intersects with something. Uh, here are many details, but roughly speaking, uh, the class of uh, class of gamma is mapped to uh, this uh, sector V. Okay, this is the definition of quantum torus uh, and uh, the value of our 
uh, Donald's and Thomas invariants uh, will in this uh, quantum torus. Okay, now, uh, now let's let C to be a uh, two color B L category uh, of our class introduced previously over K, and let's let the coefficient ring of our uh, quantum torus R to be the following thing. Hmm. It's the uh, motivic function over spec k. Spec k. And the following symbols are formally added. of our quantum torus. Okay. And uh, since our category is two, two color BL, this uh, quantum torus is commutative. Uh, of course, uh, it's because the non-degenerate form on the lattice gamma uh, is mm, symmetric. Okay, now let's define the motivic weight omega, which belongs to the motivic stack function over the stack of objects of this two color BL category. It's defined to be L to the one half of the Euler form. Uh, sorry. Of any object E of the ca category. Okay. After fixing this data, we have the following uh, theorem. The following integration map, which is denoted by phi, from the motivic whole algebra of this two color BL category to the uh, quantum torus we just, just introduced. Uh, it's, it could be defined in the following way, where suppose we are given such a stack function over the object, it's mapped by phi to the following motivic integration of that uh, uh, motivic weight, L to one half chi of E, uh, sorry, pi. Okay, this map satisfy the following uh, condition phi of mu1, mu2. Here, mu1, mu2 are two uh, elements of our mm, motivic whole algebra. It's equal to phi of mu1 times phi of mu2. for the argument of gamma 1 bigger than the argument of gamma 2. Okay, here of course our 
mu i belongs to c of gamma i. All right. Now let's uh, define the following element in our uh, quantum torus. Uh, suppose L inside the, of the complex plane is a ray. Then uh, let's define the following generating function, which is denoted by a l mod, uh, mod is equal to the sum over all the isomorphism class, classes. Here, uh, E belongs to uh, the subcategory of our two calabial category CL, which is generated by the semi-stable, generated by semi-stable objects with a class uh, belongs to our ray. It's defined as this generating function. This is called the Motivic uh, Donaldson-Thomas. Series of our category corresponds to this chosen uh, ray L. Of course, uh, if we choose any uh, strict sector, V inside of the complex plane, we can also uh, define a generating function A sub V mode in a similar way. And it turns out that uh, these different generating series corresponds to different uh, uh, sectors satisfies the following factorization property, namely A B mode is equal to A B one mode times A B two mode. Here. Our V is a strict sector. This is V, and it's decomposed into the following two parts, V1 and V2, and the product is taken in the uh, clockwise direction. OK, uh, so these are all called the Motivic Donaldson Thomas uh, invariants. All right, uh, I guess I can stop here for time. Thank you. Any questions, please? Uh, what's the difference between three-dimensional color category and two-dimensional color category in, in essence, essentially? Uh, well, I think the relationship, uh, I, uh, I have a, a precise statement in terms of cohomological whole algebra rather than motivic whole algebra. Uh, but uh, in some way, the motivic whole algebra is related to cohomological whole algebra. So maybe I can 
tell you something in terms of cohomological whole algebra. I will gi uh, give you an example uh, in terms of quiver. Q uh, with vertices Q0 and arrows Q1, and we construct a double quiver Q bar, um, where for any arrow in the original quiver, we add uh, an inverse arrow. Uh, well, Q1, A is an original arrow. We add an inverse arrow A star from J to I. Okay, and then we construct a triple quiver by uh, additionally add um, loops Li to each of the vertex. And in this way, we get the following pair the triple quiver and the potential. Here, potential is defined in the following way sum over all the arrows and the added loops with the commutator of the arrows with uh, its dual times Li. Okay, then for such uh, a pair quiver with potential, uh, we can define the cohomological whole algebra, um, which is called critical. homological whole algebra defined by Konsevich Soberman. <coughs> mm, it's defined using the sheaf of vanishing cycles. And uh, from this double quiver, we can uh, have the pre-projective algebra, pi q, which is actually equal to, well, c q bar uh, modded by the relations given by the commutators. Okay, uh, this is three dimensional Calabio. And for two Calabio, uh, let's consider this pre projective algebra. Uh, we can also define the cohomological whole algebra of this pre projective algebra, and the product could be induced from this uh, uh, critical uh, cohomological whole algebra mm, in the upper stair. Okay, so uh, because of the following equation, the critical cohomology of the wrap Q hat um, with respect to this um, potential is isomorphic to the uh, always compact support to the compactly supported cohomology of the, the representations of this pre-projective algebra, of course, up to some degree shifting. Right, this is a relation between three and two, and uh, from this uh, coha of three, you have uh, Donald and Thomas invariance for three-dimensional, and for this uh, coha of the pre-projective algebra, you have the Donald and Thomas invariance in two, two Calabia. So that's the relationship. Ah, I have one more question. So the, their motivic uh, whole algebra with some group structure, a fine yeah. algebra group. But there, I cannot see the group structure. Uh, here, the representations uh, of uh, the Q of dimension gamma is acted on by GL gamma. So, from what you just said, in your situation, you could maybe interpret this as a, as a Calabria 3 yeah. phenomenon, mm. but maybe you've just expressed differently. Um, so, if I give you a general 2 Calabria category, yeah. is there a reason to think that you can build a cohomological call algebra like this? Uh, you mean using this reduction? Or no, no, mm. just, if you don't assume that it just comes from a finite quiver. Ah. Uh, the, well, the definition works as well. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter if you uh, add this kind of restriction or not. Uh, 
equation. Yeah, I think for this DK invariance, you yeah, construct some kind of function with values in equivalence class of motives from your lattice, yeah? Uh -huh. Yeah. And this should be something like cuts mm, polynomials, yeah, for pure. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, for uh, for our two color PL categories with those uh, generators, there is evidence uh, for the existence of this uh, cut polynomial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do we have actual vector spaces uh, uh, whose dimensions are this? Because it should be construction of cuts in the algebra. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any precise statement so far. Thank you.